Hey, Steve Miani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with a 1998 Buick Riviera. Now, we all know that the Buick Riviera launched in 1963 really as Buick's answer to the Thunderbird, the a variety of personal luxury cars and for eight full generations from 63 through 1999 the Riviera was pretty much the most expensive Buick you could get in base form uh, and these things were rear-wheel drive up until 1978 79 onward front-wheel drive. Now in 79, Buick did launch a turbocharged engine in certain uh, Rivieras, which could be had, but for this eighth generation right here, something different arrived under the hood, a supercharger, and that's what we have right here. Now this one here uh, is a 1998, next to last year for these cars. They would be gone in 1999, and so far Buick has not relaunched the Riviera personal luxury car. But uh, under the hood of this one, let's have a look. And there it is. Now this is a 3.8 liter V6, and it is basically the same family as the 1962 Buick Oddfire V6. No kidding. Uh, the 198 and the, the 225, uh, and of course the engines that were put in Kaiser Jeeps for many, many years, and of course GM bought the V6 tooling back from Kaiser slash AMC in 1974, and in 75 reinstituted uh, instituted the V6 in Buicks to meet the uh, demand for fuel economy and small engines. But again, this engine, this 3.8 liter pushrod V8 would grow from strength the strength. Now in 1995, uh, six, seven, uh, these were naturally aspirated. The supercharger was optional, but for 1998 and 99, all of these things had the supercharged engine. Now the thing of it is, it is mounted sideways here, whereas in a uh, Buick Grand National from the 80s, it would be mounted longitudinally. And this one is a supercharger, not the turbocharger that made the 3.8 legendary in the Grand National. Now again, the supercharger is this thing right here, made by Eaton, driven by a belt. This thing right here spins uh, inside of here, a couple of rotors turn, forcing air into the engine. Whereas on the Buick Grand National turbos, well, from 78 through 80, seven, they had an exhaust driven turbocharger, a whole different thing. But here's the thing. This is actually Buick's most potent 3.8 V6, 240 horsepower right here, five horsepower more than a turbo Grand National. But this has 280 foot pounds of torque, whereas the Grand National had 330 foot pounds. Part of that is Buick definitely detuned this to some degree because with front wheel drive and 330 foot pounds of torque, you'd have some monstrous torque steer. So again, the uh, standard issue, supercharged 3.8, 240 horse, 280 foot pounds, zero to 60 in 6.9 seconds out of this thing, quarter mile and 15 and a half. Not a bad car for 1998. Now this is the 1999 consumer guide right here. And this is a, the final year for Riviera, a year newer than the car we're looking at here, but it gives us some ideas. You can see right here, base price on this car was 31.8 to 32.5, about four or five grand, well, eight grand less than a Corvette. Not that you'd cross shop this with a Corvette, but with that said, they say also consider the Acura CL, Cadillac Eldorado, the Lexus SC300 and 400. Yeah, the Lexus of the V8 and the V6, those things were the cars that ate Riviera's lunch. But it says here, uh, it says a Buick admits a large car with two long heavy doors and a relatively cramped rear seat is not for everyone. So it's pitching Riviera as an impractical, indulgent reward for upscale achievers. What else is new? That's all good. Buick thus shelves the base 205 horse for a 3.8 and makes standard the previously optional 240 horse supercharged V6. Also says here, eight of 10 Riviera buyers were already paying for the $1,195 supercharged engine. In other words, 20% uh, took the basic non a turbo a supercharged engine in 95, 6, and 7. So for 98, 99, Buick says, you know what, that blower motor, it's free. Don't worry about it. So that's cool. But again, standard equipment we see here, once again, four speed automatic, no manuals, anti lock, four wheel disc brakes, and uh, options and comfort and convenience. OnStar in its first year for 895 includes a global positioning system, voice activated cellular telephone, roadside assistance, emergency services, it requires dealer installation, and a monthly service charge. And again, chrome alloy wheels for 695 bucks. Do we see them here? Yes, we do. There they are. These are the $695 chrome alloy wheels right here. 
kind of a, a, a nice looking piece. And these are aluminum and the rest of the car is steel with one exception. In fact, uh, the hoods on these cars are made of aluminum and it's lighter that way. And that's the beauty of aluminum. Basically you have uh, uh, less mass, same part does the job. Let me find my magnet here somewhere if I can. But anyway, this is an aluminum structure right here whereas the rest of the car is steel. And again, front wheel drive on these things. These are not, uh, not rear wheel drive. That might've been a negative for the buyer of a Lexus SC. And oh yeah, here's my magnet right here. Here it is sticking to the fender and to the door and to the A-pillar. Of course, these are steel, but not the hood. So again, kind of exotic aluminum stuff on any production car uh, in the 60s was Ferrari territory. But by this point in time, it wasn't that uncommon to uh, help these things meet cafe with lighter panels made of aluminum. Let's look inside. We'll trade positions here. This one, of course, uh, bucket seats, center console, automatic, previously stated. Uh, this one does not have OnStar because the rear view mirror would be a very much more elaborate thing than this object right here. Uh, the OnStar rear view mirror had a whole bunch of stuff baked into it, this, the, the phone, all that stuff. So this one does not have OnStar, but here is the 1998 Buick catalog. I want to thank James Wilson of Akron, Ohio for sending me a bunch of cool Buick stuff, including this right here. And here is Buick selling you on the luxury of the all new Riviera again, 1995 through 99, the eighth generation Riviera. And this one here, supercharged. And again, for 98, 99, the blower was standard fare. And again, ordered by 80% of all customers in previous years, so why not? But it says here that uh, the body strength is measured at an incredibly high 25 hertz. Uh, it is the highest structural integrity of any personal luxury coupe in the world, and it enhances the glide-like feeling of Riviera's smooth four-wheel independent suspension. Here's the unit shell right here. And again, all steel, but again, aluminum hoods. And then we get into other stuff here. The interior, very posh, uh, very loaded out. And here it is right here, the optional leather seats. Pretty cool stuff. And on the right here, the most comfortable Buick ever built. This 96 Riviera, this is a 96 catalog, but the same basic notion for 98 we're looking at. The 96 Riviera establishes orthopedic superiority, having undergone over 100,000 miles of on-the-road research to attain its present superior level of seating comfort. These seats um, are made of to fit 95% of the U.S. population. And here, of course, is more Riviera stuff, the remote entry key fob right there. Dual airbags are standard as are high strength steel reinforcing beams in the doors and four wheel power disc brakes. And you know, the supercharged engine right here, the 3800 series two supercharged engine maintains six cylinder fuel efficiency with the delivering 240 horsepower. So again, the, uh, the Riviera, and here are those optional wheels right here, the, the basic ones, the spokers, and for 695, the chromies we see right there. Pretty cool. And this was capable of towing a thousand pounds, unlike the 5,000 pounds of like a Buick Roadmaster station wagon. So these were basically not really workhorses at all. But something on this one that I'm not too high on, this fiberglass cap right there. Now that's not steel, it's not aluminum. This is an add-on thing. You can see it sort of stands tall from the otherwise eh, svelte and delicate looking skin. This was part of a padded roof option, which kind of turns this thing into a real estate lady special, if you will, a Palm Beach kind of mobile. But again, these were big sellers. But again, this is a cap that's added over the stock steel roof. And this once had thick vinyl on it, but now it reveals its true identity, a quick hastily applied cap. But anyway, on the back, very cool to see the supercharged logo right there. That was not optional. That was standard equipment. Remember, with 240 horsepower, this was the most potent Buick V6 ever released to the public. And 10,613 of these uh, supercharged Rivieras were built in 1998 alone. Lots of cars. And in total, 1.1 million Rivieras were built between 1963 and 1999. It's a bunch of Rivieras. Over here, we'll see the interior on the driver's side. And if we look at the instrument cluster, we'll see 120 mile an hour speedometer, which uh, takes us away from the old days of 85 mile an hour speedometers, the 1970s and 80s, the crappy stuff. But again, that's reminiscent, that gauge layout of the 1963 Riviera, those big circular dials. But a very comfortable interior, once again, walnut veneer. Uh, this one has the uh, leather seating option on this one. And again, 10,613 
people paid that 33,000 bucks for the most comfortable Buick ever made. And here's the key fob right here with the remote uh, thing here for lock, unlock the horn, open the trunk. Let's see if we can open it with this. Ain't gonna happen, but we do have the key. So let's play a little game. What's in the trunk? I love this little hidden key right here, the Riviera Crest right there, seen all the way back to 1963, very classy stuff, when Bill Mitchell wanted to take on for a Cadillac and Lincoln. And, uh, okay, let's open that trunk, and, okay, oh, the Lindbergh baby's not in here, but that's okay. Oh, look at this. Okay, this, okay, this is the optional rear view mirror. This one here has the compass mirror. Also uh, has this thing. Is this an OnStar? I don't think this one is. But again, this is a, uh, a delaminated mirror. And you got to love a lot of these cars of this period of time. The mirror glues to the windshield with that little spot right there. There are kits when this thing falls off, not if. There are kits that can re-glue that back on. What else do we have in here? Got a little bit of, uh, oh, Arm & Hammer detergent. Nice to see that. Uh, spare tire still in place underneath. Yeah, the mini spare still has the original jacking equipment. Looks like it's never been used. Stuart Little's uh, condominium is in place there inside of the jack, so it's nice to see that it's being used. I hope the mice appreciate the luxury and comfort that this car gives them. And also the antenna, it's very cool to see this. The antenna mounted on the rear quarter panel. You know, most American cars, the antenna's on the front fender and whatever, but when you put it on the tail like this, it kind of gives it a speedboat, a rakish powerboat vibe. And so this is the story right here. The next to last Riviera, a dynasty that went 63 through 1999. 1.1 million Rivieras built in eight generations. It all came to an end in 1999. Now the word is we probably won't see a Riviera in the near future, 2023, 24, but who can say if they'll bring this thing back maybe as an EV or who knows what, but the Riviera nameplate has a lot of cachet, a lot of value, and I can't imagine that Buick has totally turned its back on the Riviera. We'll have to see what the future holds. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steam Magazine YouTube channel, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and by all means, hit the bell so when you're aware of the next Junkyard video comes out tomorrow morning.